Hi, pussies, and welcome back to Therapist. Today we have Robin on, and I'm so, so, so excited about it. I wish we had her on after the PCA so she could, like, give everyone the advice she gave me after because it was great. But obviously, I don't know if we as a group has discussed the PCA is so fun. Um, I have breasts. <laughs> I have breasts. I have boobs. Um, so that's the one thing I learned. Some people went home with a trophy and I went home with like a raw size recommendation. You know what I mean? That's what I went home with. And, you know, everyone on the internet that's like, why are you there? Why are you there? I also don't know why I'm there. So like, I don't really have an answer. You know what I mean? Most of the time I'm like, wow, I can't believe I'm here. Cause like, why? Not even as like, I can't believe it. I'm also just like, like why? You know, like I also don't know. But, like, what am I going to do? Say no? Like, it was so much fun. As a reminder, submit tell me what's wrongs to passthatpuss.com or send me your number at passthatpuss.com. As always, names are encouraged but not required. Pussies, I love you. Enjoy the episode. Now, today's guest, you guys might know her as the internet's agent or girl boss town, but I am lucky enough to know her simply as Robin. I welcome Robin Del Monte. <gasps> yeah, long awaited. Did you like my? Did you like my? Spiel? Yes, because if you get to call me Robin. It means something. Right. It means something. And that's really, I think it's funny too, because I feel like not a lot of people know how close we are. No, yeah. Because I feel like we don't show it a lot, which is a lot of my relationships with men. Like, they like don't show me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I'm so excited to be here. I'm so proud of you. I've uh. seen this whole process come to life and it just feels surreal to be in therapy. I know. Therapist. Well, you guys, Robin like helps me with a lot of my ideas. Like, no, 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 no. I, I, I help you with ideas, but I feel like more so I help you with mental health. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would say like that is like my main job. I would say I'm like Jake's weighted blanket. Like, yeah, you are. I just need to like come and sit on top of you until you calm down and then we like watch Glee. Like, you know what I mean? People don't know how crazy I am. Do they not, though? <laughs> That's what everyone says. Everyone says everyone can tell how crazy you are. No, no, no. It, and you're not crazy at all. Like, I think I think crazy is a good thing. Crazy is yeah. kind of like, see you next Tuesday. It's, like, cute. But, um, no, no, I think that I also always forget how young you are. Right. And, like, being in this space at such a young age, like, I can't even imagine. Like, literally, like, when Jake was born, like, I already had pubes. Like, I, <laughs> like, I, like, like, I forget how much of an age difference we have. So right. I kind of like to be there for you whenever you need it, creatively, mental health-wise, or whenever we want to get after it, right. which is also fun as well. Well, speaking of getting after it, the reason Rob and I are close, <laughs> and, well, we we met previ previously to this. We met at a Chaconi's dinner where we got octopus. It was like my first link up. Yes. And then we both ended up being on the same fateful brand trip together. Yes. And, but before that, <laughs> I actually followed Jake when he had like 500 followers and he DM'd me and was like, and then made a video that was like me acting when I found out Girl Boss Town followed me and like, yes. we were like we like were internet friends for a second, which is like so fucking cringe to think about. Wait, to be but like, the best hey, friendships start out yeah, as internet no, totally. friends. Um, and then we did the <laughs> Chaconis, um, and then Can. So just to like paint this picture for you guys, um, the first time I really met Jake when he presented himself as who he really was, <laughs> was, was, was at the airport. What airport is that? No, 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 no. The, no, the no, one no. in New York. Newark. Newark. So the first time I ever met Jake where he presented himself fully as who he was, was at the Newark airport in this, you could call it a lounge. You could also call it a janitor closet. Like, I don't know what it was. And he had lost his luggage before a week-long Europe trip. And, like, I would have been a... Thank you. I would have been, like, so unmanageable, like, so stressed. <laughs> and he came up to me speaking 70 miles an hour. And I saw his team just, like, in the background, like, on their computer. And I was like, he just made... <laughs> he just made the biggest international business conference about himself within the first <laughs> five minutes I was like this man is made for me and like that's when our love started but that trip just turned into something so much bigger <laughs> than what we thought it was it's gonna something be. we'll never stop talking no. about so we 
we begin our descent into France. Yeah. And we don't, I mean, like, we can just get into the details and cut it if necessary, but really weird things happened yeah. on the plane. So first and foremost, before we got on the plane, there was an energy reader. <laughs> and she started crying when I sat down. <laughs> <laughs> and like you were over in the corner with Josh Richards as the energy reader is crying talking to me and I was like you know what I think I'm gonna like go get like my little bag of peanuts and like go sit on the plane and have a time um but yeah we also were tapped to speak on the plane um because if you guys don't know um Cam Lyons is an international <laughs> Can Lions is a festival where all the biggest brands in the world come together. Um, and it's so cool. It's so amazing. It's so fun. So it's a lot of CMOs, CEOs, yes. uh, a lot of brand activations. And they tapped me and Jake to come and speak on the plane. But we got on the plane and the plane had a lot of brands and CMOs and CEOs on it. And we were picked to speak um, and give kind of like the creator point of view of like what the social media world is like right now. However, it was 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> the lights were off. And we were speaking on the thing on the plane where they, like, tell you if the plane is going down. <laughs> what is it called? Like, the intercom or whatever? The intercom. Um, so that's where things started. But I would say to kind of recap, since you guys weren't there with us, and a lot of this is inside joke stuff that, like, you might not ever be able to fully comprehend. But it's I would say it's kind of like when you go to camp. Yes. So when you go to camp, you're in a new environment, in a right. new setting, and you know nobody. But by day three, you're, like, acting as if it's your routine, and you're right. so close with everybody. Yes. Like you create a yes. bond. Yes. So that's kind of how me, Jake, my team, and his team felt during this trip. Right. And on a serious note, like, not even, like, to be funny, but I feel like I have a really hard time making friendship in adult life because it's really hard for me to, like, feel safe yeah. and to trust people, especially in this industry. Mm -hmm. And we, when we got together and we went through this ex experience, I feel like I just became so comfortable with you and your amazing team. And I felt so safe and around you guys. And I just have the best time around you. But it's because we went through it. You know what yeah, I mean? I feel like that's yeah. where the best friendships are. And Matt start. protected us. And Matt protected us. Shout out Matt. <laughs> Shout out Louise. Shout out Bibbs. So we start, we, we land, the, the plane lands. We get there, I, no luggage in sight for me. Like, I don't want to be there. And everyone starts talking about where they're staying. This and, is where it gets good. And Robin and I are like, oh my God, we're staying at the same place. Yeah, in the center of Cannes. And by the way, there are so many people going to Cannes Lions. So the hotels book out a year in advance. So when we were asking everybody where they were staying, they were all like, oh, we're here, here, here. At the center of Cannes. We're like, oh, we're at the T, Mimi. Like, <laughs> like, is that ringing a bell for anybody? And they're like... No, like, no. And then it breaks off into shuttles right. of people getting brought to the hotels. So we get in and we look at Matt and we go, we've had such a long day, and but it's it's such a blessing to be there. But we're like, okay, like how long, like how long is the drive there? And he's like, oh my God, it's like an hour and a half. We're like, oh my God, an hour and a half. Wow, like this airport must be really far from the festival. Like whatever, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> We pull up. Have you guys ever seen Emperor's New Groove? Like, Cusco's castle. Like, it's like, <laughs> like, like, where it's like the top of a hill, there's like a castle. But then all the way at the bottom is like the town. Like, where everything is happening. We were literally... Our hotel was an hour away from the town where the festival was happening. And it wasn't just an hour away, but it was in a village. Like it was in <laughs> like a dead out, like a, it was literally in a village. Like it wasn't in a normal like right. city, which is absolutely gorgeous, especially in France. Like it was genuinely breathtaking. Yeah, it to be gorge. like fully like immersed in like like their culture. Was oh, so, no, my TikTok. Do you yeah, remember? Jake thought he was <laughs> call me by your name yeah no i really like did. literally he was like smoking cigarettes and like fucking peaches and i was like hello <laughs> but so it was beautiful but like ubers didn't go there we no were one. just like yeah. so far away from everything so we kind of had to like make our own fun at this resort right. and we pull up i'm a love island uk attic okay <laughs> and there's a certain type of guy that goes on that show right. we pull up and there's a guy who comes to the car to get our bags um and it's kind of like a boutique hotel right. so these, the employees wear many hats. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> so he pulls up and before the door opens, okay. I go, I'm going to hook up with that man. Like he is so <laughs> Love Island UK. Like I, like, oh my God, there's my husband. Like, you know, when you're delirious after a plane, yes. I'm like, oh my God, like there's my husband. He's so hot. Like whatever. I had like vacation brain a right. little bit. Um, <laughs> fast forward. It ends up happening. Um, and that's why manifestation is real. And, uh, you know, putting things up there in the universe is important. That was the best night of our lives. It was the best night of our lives. Night? 
Yes. And like the day after that happened, I had to go do a panel on a yacht. Um, and I literally looked like Sam from Jersey Shore when Ronnie breaks her glasses. Like I was so, <laughs> I was so disheveled and I like couldn't get an Uber to the, to the yacht to speak. I'm like sitting on this panel, like after my night with Paul and like, what is my fucking life? Like this is like crazy. Like Cannes is not a real place. I encourage you guys all to go. We loved it. It was but, the best um, time of our lives. It was the best time of our lives. But I feel like that's when we became super close. And, um, um, I feel like also because like we're so close and I'm so close with the people that you work with, like navigating this industry with like can under a belt and those experiences, like, you know, Lady Gaga is like, there's could be a hundred people in a yes, room. Yes. Like what I'm like, there could be a hundred people in the room, but I'm looking for Jake and his team. Like whenever I'm at an event, like, you know what I mean? There could be a hundred people in the room, but like, is Matt there? But no, there could, <laughs> there could be a hundred people in the room, but like where, como se dice, where the fuck is Matt? <laughs> Like dead ass. Um, but yeah, no, I, I love Jake so much. I love his team and I can't wait. We're doing, we're going to do it again this year. Oh, we, no, we are. Oh, and the last part. So Spotify <laughs> beach. Okay. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Do you remember? What? <laughs> the TikTok we made in the Uber. Well, it actually took so long for us to get into the center of the city that we were able to make a short film and produce it <laughs> and raise fundraising for it. Um, so um, that happened on the way down there. And in that Uber ride is actually when I thought of an idea that I want to pitch for us. I pitched this to you before. You guys, there needs to be a TV show, mm-hmm. kind of like The Simple Life. But it's they send me and Jake to the most random cities in the USA and they give us three days to try to make the city go viral on social media. Like that is so smart. And, and then each episode, Jake has one of his celebrity friends as a guest to come to, to like promote the most random cities in the world. <laughs> and I'm the one doing like the ideas and telling us what to do. And I'm complaining. Exactly. Which is essentially what this was. Yeah. Um, so essentially Spotify brings their top performing artists to have an intimate concert for everybody attending on the beach, the, on the beach attending the festival. And we're like, oh, this is cool. Like, you know, you go to events where there's performers. Like, we're like, this is amazing. Whatever. Right. We pull up. It, the event was so cool because these performers and all these celebrities and CEOs and CMOs, like they have their guards down because right. like, it's just like such an intimate setting and it was the funnest night of our life. And then we went to bed that night. I didn't go to bed with that night. It was the second one. Mm-hmm. Um, we went to bed and then we woke up in the morning and it was like, it, being in Canada is like having a field trip every day. Like, yeah, you know when like, you wake up and you're so like, I get to do the whole thing over again yeah. today. Like, <laughs> Spot by beaches for two nights and like the second night, ASAP Rocky was performing. And Rihanna was and, there. And Rihanna was there and Florence and the Machine performed. And like, yeah. we woke up and Robin was like, how? blessed are we that we get to do this again today. If you had to pick two people to do Spotify Beach and Can this year that weren't Taylor Swift, who would you say? Okay, that's such a good question. Thank okay. you. This is my podcast, actually. <laughs> it is. Yeah. So I would pick... Okay, I would pick... Okay, can you go first? I would pick Drake <gasps> wow. and Blink-182. okay. I would pick... Because if Blink-182 is there, then Courtney is there. And right. then maybe Alabama's there. <laughs> and then maybe Landon's there. And then maybe Mason's there. Well, and then maybe Landon, Food Goddess there. Landon and Charlie broke up? And did you hear that I asked him on the carpet about Charlie's drink order? And, like, I didn't know that they, they were, were broken, broken up. up. Yeah. But it's okay. Like, she'll, they'll both bounce back. They'll bounce back. I, like, watched him be born on Meet the Barkers. But, <laughs> and then if Drake is there, then you know what else will be there. His private parts. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Which, like, I am really looking forward Me to. Me too. Um, I would pick, who do I listen to? Like, Tyla? Yeah. She was there last year, by the way. Okay, so I take it back. I would pick, who do I listen to? Like, a lot. Like, I would pick, I would. Say I would pick one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's this new indie band I would pick. They are so incredible. I'm obsessed with them. Rock on. I would pick. <laughs> I would pick Lana Del Rey. Yeah. Because I think hearing Lana Del Rey in France would be like ethereal. That would be everything. And I would pick. She would be like sweating cigarettes on stage. <laughs> yeah. She's like levitating. I would pick Lana and I would pick. Justin Bieber. Too, yeah, Justin Bieber. Yeah, Justin Bieber. Or like I want to think of a rapper. Okay. Like you did Drake Drake's <laughs> <laughs> Little Or Wayne? like um I know my socks are showing this. Like Spotify has a lot of money, right? So like the sky's the yeah. limit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, sign me. Um yeah, no, they can get anybody. Like literally. Like I, I feel. think Tate would Tate McRae would kill it. She, I feel like she's gonna do it. She would put on a killer performance in camp. Oh my god. That'd be cunt. Yeah, and everybody would like 
That, yeah, that's everything that needs to happen. Well, you guys, I've actually been very excited to have Robin on because no one is better at pop culture references yeah. than her. It's actually she mental illness. She pees them out in yeah. the morning yeah. and brushes her teeth with them when mm-hmm. she goes to bed. Yeah. I've actually, I've never met someone <laughs> who contains so much You can pop- say I don't have a life. What? A, you can say I don't have no, a life. No, you do. You just, you regurgitate pop culture. Yeah. I feel like- Growing up, I always say that growing up, the TV was my babysitter. And right. I just have a sickening memory in general, probably because I've been cheated on by so many men. Like, I yeah. just, like, retain the information. Um, and it just comes second nature to me. Also, when we grew up, not you, because you're younger, but there was these things called, like, I love the 90s. I love the I 2000s. Those. Yeah. E! News yeah. True Hollywood Story. So, like, oh! it was, like, educating us on yeah. pop culture from a young age. I so. loved. Bring back True Hollywood Story. They, like, tried to, and it, like, didn't do well. But I think they should bring back the I love the 2000s. But do it like start in the year 20, 2010. Is that how you say that year? The 2010s, yeah. The 2010s. Um, and have like influencers and celebrities like discuss like historical moments that happened like year by year. I think the good that. part about true Hollywood stories was that they were kind of like ex- exposés. Yeah. They weren't like. Back- it didn't pay everybody in like a, the best light. Yeah, like, they didn't. Honest. But they weren't backed by the celebrity all the time, yes. which I think was fascinating. Yeah. But now I feel like everyone would sue everyone. Yeah. And it's like too difficult, but that's why they were good. They were incredible. And now everyone wants a Netflix doc and they want like, they want. Growing up, I would always be like, I'm keeping this photo like for my E-True Hollywood story. Which ones did you watch? All of them. But I would say the ones that stick out in my mind are, they did a uh, one, obviously Britney Spears had a really good one. I don't think I've ever seen the Britney one. Yeah. And they're still painting her parents in like a positive light. So it's kind of like eerie to look back Uh now and look at it. Um, They did one on Hugh Hefner because I loved the show, The Girls Next Door. Uh Um... Yeah, those are the two that, like, stand out. But I remember they would do ones on, like, the Brady Bunch or, like, right. those like right. those people from, like, the 90s. They're impossible like, to house. find online. You there was a Full House one that I liked. You say. can't find any of them online. I know. I've tried. Yeah. But I think Bring Back, I love the 2000s. But yeah. I said all this to say that she's going to be really good with the prescriptions today. How cute is an envelope? I know. We don't Shout use envelopes Nolan. Oh, guess how old Nolan is. 22. Oh, He's 20. I am psychic. <laughs> He's 20. Oh, really? Are you in school? No. Cute. Me and Louise were like sister shook when we found out he was 20. <laughs> I would say your birthday's in February. No. When is it? October. He's a Libra. I'm a Libra. Oh, you're balanced. Okay, cool. I don't know about <laughs> that. <laughs> um, and then one last question. What was your after school snack growing up? Like, what would you make every day when you got home from school? Which is like today, because you're like... <laughs> no, like what old. did you have last night? I haven't been in school in like four years, but um Okay, subtle flex. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know what it was? Egg what? salad sandwich. That's fucking, that I'm actually, sorry. No, that is actually fucking disgusting. Oh, I hate egg salad. I hate potato salad. I what? hate chicken salad. What? Why that's not salad. No, have you seen that meme that's like this is what people who eat coleslaw look like? <laughs> no. <laughs> that you are egg salad, McGee. <laughs> you are egg salad, McGee. I'm like, taking that as oh, I have No, egg salad needs to do, like, I'd be like, people would start eating egg salad if Erwan made it cute again. They try to. Oh, an egg salad smoothie? That's how bad egg salad is. Yeah, even Erwan. Do you, you, do you guys like it? That is so Rebecca. You would. That is so Rebecca. I don't even like mayonnaise. Uh, I could go, I, I like it. When me and my high school boyfriend were arguing, I hate mayonnaise so much. He would come over and he would eat a Wendy's chicken sandwich with mayo on it before and come over and act like he wanted to apologize. So I would make out with him. And then he'd be like, hi, I just ate may- mayonnaise. Like, because I could taste it in his make out. He's a Virgo. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it's disgusting. Um, where did we, how did we get to egg salad? <laughs> oh, um, what I, I'll tell you, because all I could think about when you were talking about your after school snack was obviously mine. Mm-hmm. So mine was Top Ramen. Yeah, and then I yeah. got too fat, and my dad was like, you need to stop. Because I would have one a day. Because I would have one a day, and he would, like, walk downstairs and look so disappointed as uh-huh. I was eating it. And I, the, there was a point where I gained so much weight that I was like, okay, we got to stop. So then I stopped having after-school snacks overall. So if you guys are struggling out there, <laughs> please call this number. No, um, that's it. I, I – Never really knew it was like that parents at a house. So I was running that <laughs> shit like a fucking diner. Like I literally was like, it was a club. Like it was li- like literally it was Delilah. Like I was having friends over, making food, fucking. <laughs> what was your after- <laughs> It was like crazy. What was your after school snack? 
Oh, I, I was a huge ramen person, but this is how sick in the fucking head I am and how I had literally no parental supervision. I would make ramen and I would bring it to the bus stop. Yes, I took the bus to school. Yeah. I was a bus kid. But I took the being bus a too. bus kid gives you the thickest. That's how it can be on social media. Yeah. It's because I took the bus growing up. <laughs> like the things people say to me on social media when they're like, you're fat, you're ugly, you're untalented. I was like, bitch, I took the bus. <laughs> like, I, this is not my first rodeo, okay? <laughs> like, seriously. Um, but um, I would bring it in a mug and I would eat it for breakfast, like ramen, chicken ramen. And then after school, I would do a tortilla with cheese and uh. put it in the microwave and kind of make a quesadilla mm. or um, Oreos. I loved dipping Oreos in milk, real milk. I hate Oreos. Do you? Yeah. Do you guys like them? Yeah, they're not my fave. What's mm -hmm. your favorite cookie? Like. How slutty is the word cookie? It's <laughs> <laughs> holy shit! I just felt sexual. I say cookie, like cookie. my favorite cookie. Cookie. Not to sound like bougie and annoying, it's probably a Levain cookie. Warm. I don't up. think that's bougie. Like those are. That's my favorite. Yeah, cookie. that's really good. Or like um, a sugar cookie, just a regular sugar cookie that, with nothing on it. That is sick. Yeah. Yeah. Love a sugar cookie. Okay, yeah. so let's get into the tummy. What's wrongs? Yeah. What are you guys chuckle monstering about? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what is it? <laughs> this is turning dirty. This is turning dirty. I don't think your feet look bad. Thanks, Robin. <clears throat> Tell me what's wrong. <laughs> your feet. <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> I just found out that my boyfriend fucked my best friend and got her pregnant. I'm supposed to go on vacation with him and his family next week to the Bahamas. Ooh. His, pam his family <laughs> paid for the trip. What okay. the fuck? So if that's the case, this is what you do. Ready? Right. Yes. So I always thought when approaching a cheater, you can't go into it angry or like being like, why did you do this? Because then right. they're going to be like, well, why did you find out? Why did you snoop? Right. Why did you they turn it on you? Right. So you need to go into it in a way where they subconsciously confess and feel bad about their actions, which is a really rare thing for men, like for men to do. Subconsciously. So here's what okay. I like. This is what he, she has to do. I think she has to before they go on vacation. Together, what do you think she should go on vacation? Yeah, because this is all part of the plan. OK, <laughs> so she goes on vacation before the vacation. She lets him know that she wants to verbally tell him how much that he means to her and that going on vacation with him is just a step in the right direction of their future and how she feels so incredibly grateful that his family is now becoming her family <gasps> and that anything I that chose. happens in the future, she'll always know that she can go back to his family because they love and support her no matter what happens between them. To plant the seed in his head that, by the way, when this all goes down, his family's going to be on my side as well because yeah. I'm going to twist it. Yeah. She goes on the vacation. Okay. She is so fucking kind to his family. She mostly hangs out with the family. So they see, wow, this girl is great. Like, she's incredible. Like, yeah. <laughs> she is the best. The last night of the vacation, she lets the tea spill. She says, I know what happened. I know that you fucked my best friend. I know that you're expecting. I know that you're going to do a gender reveal on TikTok and it's going to be cheesy. And <laughs> I just want you to know, I'm so happy for you. Like, I think that is great. Like, whatever you want to do, you should do because that's all part of the plan. She then goes, sneaks off and hooks up with the hotel employee. Okay. She gets pregnant. Uh-huh. The family then goes, brings her back to the resort uh -huh. to have the baby shower with the hotel employee. That's what I think should happen. That was amazing. Thank you. Bad. Yeah. Because she needs to get the family. <laughs> realistically, though, she needs to get the family on her side before she drops the tea. Well, because, do you? Yeah. Because if she, she, I think she should go even if she knows. Because if she has his family on her side and is like, why did you do that to her? Like, we and has his family feeling bad for her. Right. Then, like, he's whether he feels bad about it or not, his family's going to make him feel bad right. about it. And it's going to be a constant reminder. I completely agree with everything you yeah. said. I'm trying to think of, like, something to prescribe. Oh, I mean, I guess, because this has to do with vacation and pregnancy, um, not to do any spoiler alerts, but do any of you watch Yellow Jackets? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. I'm going to prescribe Yellow Jackets. Yes. Because. The plane goes down. <laughs> yeah, no, because. The plane goes down. The plane goes down, so technically they're on vacation, and the girl's okay, being, boyfriend. Okay, being stranded from a plane crash is not vacation. <laughs> yeah, like, but, like. Okay. Positive. She, Glass half full. There's a main girl. Yeah. I think her name's like Shannon or something. I forget. There's the main girl. And then there's the main girl's best friend. The main girl 
before the plane yes. crash, fucks the main girl's best friend's boyfriend and gets pregnant. Mm. And then they land, they or they crash, sorry. The plane crashes and they get stuck there. And so this girl is stuck with her best friend's baby, mm-hmm. pregnant, mm. stranded with her best friend. Yeah, so which, I would which happens that. all the time. So you're not alone <laughs> if this is happening to you. Um, but I'm shocked you didn't prescribe Glee because it's literally the plot of Glee when she gets pregnant. Oh, my God. Yeah. So I also think you could, like, uh, like walk into his house singing an acoustic version of Don't Stop Believing. Or or Blackbird. Or what yes. did they sing to Quinn? Um, Beth. Yes. <laughs> so, I'm, I, But honestly, that's really, that's horrible that that happened. But I feel like at the end of the day, when people show their personalities and show their true colors, like, that's doing you a favor rather than, like, hurting you. So I think. Yeah, damn. Good. Well, go on vacation still. Yeah. Go on the vacation. Hook up with the hotel employee. And get pregnant Mm -hmm. with his kid. Yes. I'm talking to this guy who's Christian, and I really like him. Justin Bieber. (laughs) I'm not religious at all. 19. A virgin. And I've never been kissed. He just told me that he's waiting for marriage, and I was not planning on doing that at all. This could be my first relationship, but this really caught caught me off guard. Please help IDK what to do. Oh, I'd stop hanging out with them. Wait, but does she... Wait, what is it? Can you, she is talking to this guy who's... She's talking to a They're guy. both virgins. They're both and virgins. She, she wants to have sex. And he's like, wait, I'm waiting for marriage. So I'm like, oh, go elsewhere. Yeah. I would prescribe... Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, because I feel like if that's somebody else's morals or values, like, you don't want to, like, yeah, budge. Like, but if she really liked him... But waiting until marriage is... I don't know. Yeah. Like, I don't know about all that for her. Yeah, I waited till like... Eighth grade, which was like a big step. Right. Um, and I don't prescribe that for anybody. Um, I was 21 and the Justice, Justin Bieber album came out that night and I laid in bed and listened to it. Do, do you guys want to know mine? <laughs> I was, it was actually like, I was 14, like freshman year. Uh-huh. Um, and ringtones were a thing this is how old i am okay (laughs) and blockbuster was still a thing which is how old i am i went to blockbuster (laughs) the day i lost my virginity like tell me i need eye cream like it's so bad (laughs) um and we got saw six saw six like the yes murder film or whatever i looked like i was jacking off um (laughs) Put it on, and then I, like, hate scary movies. So I was like, honestly, like, let's just, like, hook up or whatever. And, like, we'd been dating for six months. So this was, like, intimate. This was special, okay? (laughs) Um, And we started hooking up. His cell phone kept going off, and his ringtone was, jerking. You're a jerk. I know. You're a jerk. I know. And that is so meta for, like, what happened in the future. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then his mom is knocking on his door. And was like, blank, like, I got your skates sharpened because he was, like, a hockey player. Uh-huh. Um, and as he was inside of me and this was all happening, I was like, I think I did something bad. But why does it feel so good? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. the Taylor So you song. had a great time. I had a great time. But um, it's so funny to, like, think back. Like, going into having sex, like, how do you know what to do? You don't. Yeah. Ew, you like know. no how awkward is that and i remember you guys this is so embarrassing i was kind of like a late bloomer even though i lost my v card so young like it <laughs> happened very quickly like i kissed and like fucked the same like <laughs> day um but i remember being nervous thinking about like making out because i was like Me what too. if i like do, do you, it wrong you know and i like do. you know how people like pretend to kiss on their hands like in movies and stuff yeah, like that? I, I, that. I wasn't that much of a loser oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> But I remember, this is so, this is actually, I cannot believe I'm saying all this. This is fucking foul. I remember <laughs> watching The Notebook and like, you know how there's like a sex scene in The I've Notebook? I've seen The Notebook, but yes. Prescribe. Okay. <laughs> like, and then like, take, yeah, you have a lot to do. Um, And like watching them hook up and being like, okay, like, I, I think like that's how you do it. Like, I remember thinking that for right. The Notebook. Like, I wasn't watching porn. I was watching The Notebook, like, taking notes. As I was watching, was like, gonna... True Blood, and I was like, okay, so that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, and like it vampires? Wasn't... Yeah, and they were, like, fucking with chains. Which is kind of what you do. I, In yeah, this it's... town, hey. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, yeah, no, I would honestly say I would prescribe a dating app. Yeah, okay, because you should not, def- and it shouldn't be Christian Mingle. But I also think it's a really good thing that you are. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I also think it's a good thing that like you're being upfront about it now and figuring this out now before like real feelings get involved. So. Yeah, I think like maybe you can continue to talk to him, but I I definitely think you shouldn't be exclusive if he's not willing to fuck until marriage. Yeah. My boyfriend is a football player, and he is getting really close and personal with other guys. 
<laughs> For example, him and another boy were touching each other's dicks in the locker room. No, I think that's literally called playing football. Like, that is literally... <laughs> That is the game. And he's always made jokes about being gay. Am I overreacting about him touching other guys? Pina says, please help and let me know. How does she know this, though? I guess word has gotten around town that they're, like, touching dicks in the locker room. Okay. Well, that reminds me of in John Tucker Must Die when she's sitting in the locker room. They're like, I'm going to cork and I'm porker this weekend. Yeah. Um, so, I like, picture the girl in the locker room seeing him, like, shake hands of the dick with the other guys. Um, I think that... <sighs> um, well, when it comes to things that happen in like the locker room uh, with men and stuff like that, I don't really have experience, but I would prescribe, oh, remember those BuzzFeed quiz, BuzzFeed quizzes that are like, are you gay? Yes. <laughs> she should send him anonymously the, uh, the BuzzFeed, are you gay Or like, or like let's take this for fun together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, like what is this? Yeah, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And then also put on like Brokeback Mountain in the background be like, and just <laughs> see, see, like, see what's happening. Yeah. No, but honestly, like if he's exploring his sexuality, I think that's something that he should, um, is like personal to him. So it's kind of hard to come at somebody being right. like right. all of this. But at the same time, like if, you're dating and he's doing that and that's making you uncomfortable you you need to let him know let him know so we prescribed the buzzfeed are you gay, gay quiz, quiz and broke back my win and then having an honest conversation yes but but she also needs to come up with how she knows this information because he how could, does she know this that's what i'm saying can you write back in right back in with code touched each other's dicks and yeah. let us know <clears throat> My boyfriend is currently pledging a frat. So far, I haven't seen him in four days. Very few texts with updates that we may or may not hang out. What do I do? Like, that's just going to be your life until he's done with pledging. Till he's done, until he's in the ground. Like, yeah, like maybe, like, till he's dead. Like, like, when he's, like, 87. Like, if you're dating somebody who's in a frat, like, I would not expect a reply. Like, it'll right. be, like, the woman on the Titanic being, like, it's been 87 years. Like, <laughs> like that is going to be you by your phone. Um, I on it, but, like, pledging and all they of that They take it stuff, so seriously. Yeah, they like, take it so seriously. So I would prescribe watching the critically unacclaimed but should have been claimed show greek i've never seen greek oh jake no jake you need to watch greek <laughs> it was on abc family yes, right it's very glee in a sense right. like it's so so incredibly good you need to watch it and i feel like as she is trying to get through this period where right. there's not a lot of communication for something for her to do to pass the time would be to watch the show greek because there are guys and frats on that show who treat their girlfriends like good so that mm -hmm. could be giving her hope of the right. future and it's also something that can take up all of her time because it is so fucking good and it's so underrated not enough people are talking about it the theme song was by the plain white tees like that's when you know <laughs> that is when you that know is when you theme know. songs used to be so good everything i don't want to wait wasn't that Dawson's Creek? Yes. Good job. Thank you. And then the OC, California. Have you seen the OC? Don't even. You live like in a pool house without a pool. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like you need to watch the OC. I remember though the hills was unwritten. Of course. And Laguna then, Beach was, um, let's go back. Back, back, back to, to the, the beginning. beginning. And then Unfabulous, that Nickelodeon show. Day after day, it's Unfabulous. And, yeah, so good. Um, also, I just remember being in college and having all, when all the guys rushed, and I actually just talked about how I tried to rush a frat. Okay. I got really far. I got to the end for like the best house. That, it was too. essentially can. Yeah, it was can. Yeah. And I just remember all the guys taking it so seriously at the end and they thought they were like so cool for pledging and like, they just like, it's there. Like, think of it as like your boyfriend's at summer camp. But like not. But like a little more problematic. Yeah. <laughs> My boyfriend of three months hasn't eaten me out. Oh, my God. Wow. Congratulations. You guys have lasted so long. I'm so happy for yeah. you. That's incredible. My, bo my boyfriend of three months hasn't eaten me out yet, Ooh. but asked if I'd eat his ass. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to eat man ass, okay. but want mine eaten. All okay. right. What should I do? Um, Damn. Let him eat that ass like a cupcake. Okay. Here's <laughs> the thing. When beggars can't be choosers. Right. So if you want your ass eaten and you're not willing to risk eating ass, you need to approach it in a way where you're saying that I only want to receive, but you can't. But I totally respect if you don't want to eat ass. I don't really eat ass. Um, <laughs> I mean, there has been a time. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> but see, how, what I would prescribe... 
Oh, I was going to say something so bad. I can't even say that. Um, oh, what's that? No, I'll say it after. This is controversial. Um, <laughs> I would prescribe. Oh, this is kind of boring, though. Would you gonna, were you going to prescribe post to be my Omarion? Oh, eat the booty like groceries. Yeah. yeah, no, I was I was gonna have them be like, let's make a TikTok together and like do that song, like eat the booty like groceries and be like <laughs> You know what I mean? But um I would she could also say, this is something like I would do. I would be like, I'm getting dental work done and I really can't have bacteria in my mouth because I'm getting my wisdom teeth out and they need to check to see if there's bacteria in my mouth. So like I can't eat your ass. Um, but like maybe in the meantime, you could eat, eat mine. mine. Yeah. Okay, that's a great prescription. So I would prescribe dental work and doing a TikTok dance to Omarion's supposed to be. <laughs> and then, like, just seeing where the night goes from there. And also, um, yeah, I think that's But a good have idea. you ever asked for something in the bedroom that you weren't receiving? No. I hate receiving stuff. Or I like receiving dick. I was going to say, you hate <laughs> receiving <laughs> stuff. I was like, you literally like to receive any attention. But uh, I like- don't like, like, getting head. Okay. Whoa. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> Holy shit. Like, I think maybe because, like, some of, like, I grew up around people growing up who were, like, I grew up around a lot of girls who were, like, I don't like that down there. Like, I don't like when guys, like, sometimes girls I know just don't. Oh, don't like to get eaten yeah, out? Yeah, and I think, like, I subconsciously, like, internalized that mm-hmm. and, like, applied it to myself. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of it either. Yeah, that's Which is what controversial, I'm saying. But I yeah. like to give. I love to give. Yeah, I'm a giver. Paul, I'm kidding. Um, go on. One of my best friends is cheating on her boyfriend with multiple men okay. all the time, and he has no idea. My first instinct has been to keep it to myself because that's my friend. Yeah. But her boyfriend is a really sweet guy. She literally fucks other men in his bed, and he talks about marrying her one day. Pussies, what do I do? Okay, so this, I've been around a situation like this before, um, and I wasn't the friend that wanted to tell, but I was friends with somebody who um, like, was cheating, right. and one of – their very close friends told the boyfriend. Right. In my head, I think, like, think of how far a guy would go to cover his guy's friend's back. Like, they would literally lie to their mother's face to be like, oh, no, like, he was here last night, like, whatever. So I feel like wanting to put the guy first in your friendship is just, like, not cute. Like, I I, I don't agree with that. And I feel like maybe you're internalizing something because a lot of times hate and jealousy comes from, like, Internal, internalized right. something that like you maybe don't really like this girl that much or right. maybe like you really want a boyfriend and she has one and she's right. fucking it up so I would ask yourself why you want to get involved because these situations also get extremely fucking messy right. like very fast I just like was always taught like not to ever my parents were always like you should never get involved with someone else's relationship yeah ever. unless it's like your best friend your but yeah. even then they're like you need to like Stay the fuck out of it. Yeah. It's only going to bite you in the ass. So I, I would prescribe something that's really, really, really close to my heart. Okay. And that is season two of the Jersey Shore. Um, because Yes. This, oh, my God. So good, Robin. This is the that. Note. This is that. Like that yes. whole season. So if you're thinking about saying something, just watch that. And then watch season three, and I think it'll show, you know, how it things go It fucks up down. their friendship for basically yeah. what she's talking about Because is- at the end of the day, a lot of girls still might want to- st- or, like, the guy might still want to stay with her. And they, right. they they get through that little hump in their relationship, literally and figuratively. Yeah. And then you're the person. That fucked it all up. That fucked it up, even though she was the one fucking around the corner. So it's like, <laughs> you're getting painted in the bad light. You right. know what I mean? Like, when Ronnie's like, you're just a loser from Poughkeepsie. And you know it, to Snooki. And she's <laughs> like, you were cheating. Like, how right. am I the bitch? Dear Sammy. Yeah. No. Yeah, dear Sam. Last night at bed, <laughs> Ron, Ron had his head in between two cocktail waitress breasts. <laughs> Yeah, like you guys need actually, to see like okay, so basically what she's talking about is for those who don't know, which is if you don't know, it's crazy. It's crazy. Actually, watch it though. Like, yeah, don't Jersey Shore is some of the best. I would argue reality television of all time. You could period. study it psychologically. Like it's it's incredible. Like I think you really I might should... rewatch it starting tonight. I'm watching Narcos right now. Have you ever seen Narcos? No. Okay, well, I'm currently, like, addicted to drug dealers, no pun intended, because Gris- I just watch Griselda. Griselda, yeah. Because I watched Griselda, and then everyone was like, oh, my God, if you love Griselda, you would love Narcos. You should watch Sons of Anarchy, then. <sighs> it's so hot. Really? Oh, are you kidding me? I literally, like, jack off to it. What's it, what's it about? So it's about, like, a motorcycle um, gang, right? Gang, but, like, a lot of it has to do with, like, like drug dealing, like, crime and stuff like that. Every few years, I go through a phase where I'm, like, really addicted to, like, the mob or, like, the mafia or, like, whatever. Like, I remember I would watch God... The, the Well, I've actually never seen The Godfather, sorry. But I That w- is such a movie that people always pretend that they've seen before. Yeah, and like, I'm not going to say What is another one of that? Like, what's another movie when people oh, are saying you Interstellar. pretend... Interstellar. 
you pretend you've seen it. Yeah. No, no, that, no. Honestly, okay. Great. Avatar. Avatar. Lord of the Rings. Star Wars. Um, what is Game of Thrones? Game of Thrones is the biggest TV show that everyone pretends they've seen. But I would say and that by everybody, I mean me. Like, yeah, I I haven't seen these, and I like. Pretend. But The Godfather is such a good example. Like everyone's like, oh, it's The Sopranos. Yeah, so everyone, good. Everyone's well. I'm I would, Italian. I wouldn't know. Oh yeah. I've seen two episodes, and I was like, oh, I can't. Yeah, I can't even picture you sitting down and watching like the microwave. Yeah. <laughs> like I can't see you sitting down and like consuming media, which is I, crazy. It's crazy because yeah. all I do is watch TV. Me <laughs> fucking same. But like, yeah, Jersey Shore is some of the best reality television of all watch time. Watch it and watch literally it. watch season two. It's exactly what you're going through right now. Should they watch season one? No, because season two, season two is when it starts. So season two and season three. If you want to watch season one, this is a little behind the scenes. This is I'm actually a producer. <laughs> yeah. So they shot season one right. in like 18 days at the end of the summer. So 18 we'll, days. That's yeah. how. Clo- I mean, we got close in three days. Yeah. So they. Um, it was at the end of the summer, so a lot of the bars and stuff were dead, and, like, it wasn't actually real nightlife. Like, they had to, like, kind of, like, produce that because they could only afford to shoot at the end of the summer. So it's not the best, but, like, after the success of season one, they were able to, like, fully get right. budget fully. So I would say start at season two. Where were you when— The no. Yeah, the no, or when, like, what is your favorite Jersey Shore moment? Come say, Gigi, where the fuck is my boyfriend? <laughs> yeah, so like, that is when Gianni. You, do, you quote that all the time. Yeah, Gianni comes to visit Snooki in Italy, and she lifts up her dress. Like, she's like, this literally us in can. She's like, woo! And then she lifts up her dress and shows her underwear to the club. Uh-huh. And he leaves. And when I say he leaves, like, he walked out of the country. Like, he literally <laughs> got up and walked and, like, didn't stop walking and left the country. And she is running in her pumps, saying, come on. Say DJ, where the fuck is my boyfriend? Like, and I was like, that is so me. Like, that would yeah. be me. And he's like, I just need space. Like, let me calm down. And she like doesn't give in, and it's the best. Wait. But now they're married with kids. They are. Yeah. Those two. Yes. Oh, that makes me happy. Yeah. I used to watch uh, Snooki's show with Jay Wow, Snooki and Jay Wow. Yeah, when they lived in that place in um, uh, New, Jer- New Jersey City. New Jersey City. Yeah. yeah. We need to do that. Yeah. We. We're must. going to New Jersey City. And they went to Ninja, the restaurant where they scare you. Yes. My favorite moment at Jersey Shore was when Angelina comes back from Miami and they're all screaming in the car and then it cuts to the boys, yeah. like, dead silent. Yeah. She's like, oh, you guys talking about guys? Guys? Which is the reason why you all fucking hate me. Okay. Why did they hate Angelina so much? Do you know? So, um, are we getting, like, is, uh, okay. Um, so, essentially, <laughs> she left the show because she was secretly engaged the first season. And they were cool with her after the show ended. And then, like, they would see her out. Everything was cool. Then, before she came back into Miami, she started talking shit about all the people. And that's when JY was like, you can say and get your ass beat. You can say and get your ass beat. You can say and get your motherfucking ass beat. And she's like, who do you know? Who do you know? Who told you I was talking shit about you? She's like, uh, Joey Yang, uh, Mike. <laughs> Uh, down the people. So she came in two faced because she was like talking shit about them. She was secretly engaged. However, I just saw on a podcast, this is some tea, but it's not as good as this podcast, that um, Mike <laughs> the Situation actually dated Angelina before season one, never told producers, never let it come out because they thought they would only get cast on the show because it was kind of like a real world thing. Like they were all supposed to right. come in as strangers. Right. But before Jersey Shore season one, Mike and Angelina dated and it's never come out until this day until his memoir. He talked about it in his memoir. Yes. Well, that explains why she's so weird with and him. And why they hate each other. And she's so like, much. Mike, your Mike, dirty little Mike. hamster. Yeah. yeah. Or what did she what did she say to him again? She was like, You oh, or no, did it oh no, that was um Snooky's friend. What's her friend's name? Dina. Dina. When she's, she's like, like you I can't- can pay a thousand dollars to uh, um I can get skinny for free, but you need a thousand dollars to fix your ugly fucking face. Oh, like so iconic. It's so good. Yeah, but we prescribe season two of Jersey Shore. Yeah. Seriously. Wow. I was swiping on Tinder and my dad popped up. He is a priest, <gasps> LOL. Oh my God. Um <laughs> wait, okay. Wait, 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 wait. So what is your age limit? Cause <laughs> yeah. I feel like there might be some issues there. Okay, here's what you do. I would prescribe what is that? Like I therapy? Would, yeah, I would prescribe therapy. Right. Stepdad, maybe. Maybe Gilmore Girls. No. <laughs> okay. No, I would prescribe. A li- okay, I would prescribe Olivia Rodrigo's hit song "Driver's License." This has nothing to nothing, do with all this. Rob and I talk about is how good "Driver's License" is. But like, is. 
if you listen to that song, it makes you happy. Yeah. And it makes you feel emotional. It's an emotional release. It's like Wellbutrin. Like, it is uh-huh. so good. So I would say maybe listen to Olivia Rodrigo's Driver's License. I'm going to listen to that right after It's that. so good. It's It makes me levitate, that and song. And then I would also prescribe therapy because mm. I feel like speaking to a therapist about how to approach this would be a lot better than something that I would say to do. Right. Um, speaking of Driver's License, oh, this is something I can, like, only ask you. In terms of, like, overnight success hit debut yeah. songs, yeah. like, who has done it in recent years like Driver's License? Well, That's, like, a once-in-a-decade type situation. Yeah, I would say, but that has longevity after. Yeah, Because there has been moments, like, songs that have, like, killed it. It, it was, it's the number one. It's the number it's one. It's the number one. Because of TikTok, it just exploded. But I would say the only one that did it like her with, like, overnight, it wasn't overnight for either of them, but... Hit me or hit me, baby, one more time. Or right? Yeah. Or did she promote promote that before it like went? So she. This is like a history lesson. So she went on tour with NSYNC before right. and did mall tours. But back in the day, that's when you'd have to like sell your like singles to radio stations. Okay. And like she did a, a really big radio tour, a really big mall tour, was on tour with NSYNC, and when it dropped on MTV, like it broke all records like it was it was kind of like an olivia thing which was kind of harder to do back in the day because there wasn't like social media yeah um but at first she wanted her voice to be like more soulful and stuff like that and and then she started working with max martin and that's when the beauty of that album happened and it changed the world it changed the world it changed the fucking world i love britney spears me too um yesterday they asked me on canceled they were like who is a man that would push a woman out of the way for the titanic and i said justin timberlake timberlake (laughs) <laughs> it's like shiver me timbers um well everybody forgets that justin timberlake put his hand on that woman's thigh in new orleans like two years ago we were ta- i was talking about that yesterday like, is anybody gonna talk about that that was crazy that's my favorite my favorite thing is like is anybody gonna talk about that like there's a lot yeah. of things that have happened in like, pop culture when tyler we- cameron went to Gigi hadid's grandma's funeral in, in- norway yeah <laughs> and dua lipa was there as well like, we don't talk about that. What like, are some other things we don't talk about? Oh, oh, I have one. This is controversial. This is so controversial, but so good. Tyra Banks gets shitted on. <laughs> but, like, she was a working woman. Yes. She was shooting the Tyra Banks talk show while she was hosting a Like, she had an empire. And then she tried to open up a Smize model activation you know like museum of ice cream yes like one of those like photo pop-ups and it launched (laughs) the day covid happened and she put like a year worth of work into it posting it all on social media probably put so much money into it and like nobody could go to the smize activation because of covid (laughs) and now she has a smize ice cream called smize cream (laughs) and she just did a pop-up in dubai and it makes me sad because i feel like she really cultivated such pop culture like legendary that is one of my favorite shows of all time the talk show though even her talk show tyra banks talk show she put on like but it was so it so could never happen like nowadays like the things that you do the experience that she would do like one time she had people on and she asked them their biggest fears and made them do like exposure therapy yeah, on stage in front of everybody this. they'd be like i'm afraid of spiders and, and the she, spider shoe yes, yes yes that was but i still love you girl no i love her one time yeah. actually fun fact for my birthday no not even for my birthday i think i just wrote her a letter once telling her how much i loved her and she replied i mailed it and she replied with a f- signed photo of herself shut the fuck up that i kept in my backpack because i was so ocd until it crumpled and disappeared oh my no god we need to, to we need to we need to bring back signed headshots yeah let's do that i miss you like, should have a lemonade stand but you just sign out hand out signed head so- headshots wait we should do a lemonade stand I should do a lemonade stand. Yeah. Sponsored by GBT. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, you yeah. heard it here first. Hey, I'm Annalise, and I'm going, hey, Annalise, and I'm going crazy. Just got rejected for the first time. I am not vulnerable like that. Like, I don't tell my crushes I like them ever. I'm even scared to tell my friends my crushes because I don't want anyone finding out or because you're scared of getting rejected, which just happened. I'm going to prescribe the hit song by Fifth Harmony, Miss Moving On. Yes. Because it's an anthem. It, it lets you know that things are going to be okay at the end of the tunnel. Right. Um. But at the end of the day, I think you should look at it as a win. I would never fucking put myself out there. Like, I'm not even going to tell my husband that I like him. Like, yeah. there is no, like, that is, takes so much. And rejection is right. 
that will I like hate rejection. My oh, I know you do. Yeah. <laughs> Same with me. Like I it, like triggers my fight or flight in a way that like I can't even explain. Um. So I think you should be proud of yourself for putting yourself out there. Realize that it's his loss, and then listen to Miss Moving On by Fifth Harmony. I love that. Mm-hmm. I take your Miss Moving On, and mm-hmm. I raise you okay let's do this a dancing on my own by robin okay because she's faced with such rejection mm-hmm. but she just just dances on her own in the corner yeah and babe's not it i love that song like, yeah. it's, by, it's by me it's my robin like yeah. i actually sang that hit song um no but i feel like i even though it sounds corny i i think listening to music and like getting in a vibe and like going out with your friends like it makes everything feel better yeah so like drink i'm kidding no um but yeah, good vibes. Like you should be proud of yourself. That takes a lot. Like I would literally never do I that. Never tell I would anything. never the do one, that. The one time I told a guy, I was like, "Do you want to go on a, for a drink?" He said, "As friends, yeah, absolutely." I <laughs> I dated a guy for like a long time, and I never followed him on Instagram. What? No, I like I was like I can't even show that like that validation. And we, we were dated dating. for like ten years. What? Yeah. What? Yeah, I just can't. Like I can't show it. I get that. Yeah. So what did we, pre- oh, we prescribed Miss Moving On and Dancing on My Own. Yeah. So I'm a single mom, and the nights my son is with his dad are always during the beginning of the week due mm-hmm. to his shit schedule. <laughs> How the hell do I get myself out there? Love, Sam. P.S. I'd love it if you had a mom guest in the future for mom-related problems. Cute. Oh, that's a great idea, Sam. I don't have a mom. My mom is dead, so she definitely can't be the guest. Um, But I was <laughs> raised by a single mom. I love this question because... I kind of was crazy when I was little and mm-hmm. I would hack onto my mom's match.com Aww. and I would have, I would send people my address and have them send pizza <laughs> from Domino's <laughs> with my friends, like thinking that was funny to have them order us food, <laughs> yeah. but Did I was giving everybody like my address, like these like cr- creepy people online, my address uh-huh. and it would work. Like it would work sometimes. And like, I would hack into her match.com and like mess. It, I was essentially catfish. Like yeah. <laughs> I was catfish before I was catfish, but she was saying, how does she put herself out there if she has her son half the time she says she has him on weekends or yeah she has him on weekends because that she's he's or her son's with the dad so the i have really good news men would hook up with anybody any day of the week yeah um <laughs> I actually think they might want to hook up with you more on a tuesday and then with their side hose on saturday so right. i feel like but in all reality, like, I don't think it matters the day of the week. Like, right. we're not wearing day of the week underwear anymore. I don't even think days of the week are a thing. Day like, of the week underwear. Do you know what day of the week underwear is? Do you guys? What's day of the week underwear? You're lying. What's day of the week underwear? So, like, there used to be underwear that said, like, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I know the days of the week. Um, <laughs> but... And, like, each underwear would have the day of the week on it, so you would wear it on Monday, Tuesday, That's Wednesday. That's kind of And I've pitched so many times ideas of a brand to, like, redo that. Like, yeah. that would be so cute. But, um, yeah, I don't think the days of the week matter. I would say still put yourself out there. And I feel like especially people don't have plans really during the day week at night so it's a good excuse and people would want to leave the house to like right. put yourself out there but i think that um single moms rule the world i have right. such respect for single moms mm-hmm. i feel like the reason i am I'm not calling myself successful but the reason yeah. i have found success and am so independent was because i was raised by a single mom and watched my mom worked so hard her whole life for everything she had so i appreciate everything you do and i think you should have a mom guest as well I also it's me. Agree. I'm pregnant. I'm like Beyonce. Yeah. Um, but I am. Love on top. I am. Yeah, love on top. <laughs> I am gonna get pregnant. I'm gonna find out I'm pregnant in November. I just had another psychic told me that. What? I know. Another psychic. Yeah. Another. Wait. I went to a psychic two days ago. She's like, pr- they both told you pregnant in November. I've had a premonition that I'm gonna find out I'm pregnant in November, for the past two years. But then I was like, oh. My mom found out she was pregnant with me when she was 30 in November. So I was like, maybe it's like something coming through in that end. Right. Um. But yeah. What do you prescribe? Like, I'm trying to think of a show or a movie or a song. Like Gilmore Girls. Gil- I, knew- I was about to say, can I prescribe Gilmore Girls? Yeah, I would prescribe I've Gilmore Girls. Seen it, really. Yeah, I would prescribe Gilmore Girls. And then I would also prescribe Sex in the City because I know some people think that show is problematic. But a lot of the times, for example, like sometimes I get insecure about my age and being turning 30 and still being single and seeing everybody around me, like, be married and have right. kids. Watching that show makes me feel like, oh, my God, like, these women aren't, like, in their early 20s. Like, they are in my age category. And they go through so many different phases of dating. Like, there's right. so many different 
like time periods and ways for you to date. And I feel like that show weirdly gives me hope sometimes when yeah, I'm feeling down about dating. That's how I feel dating. about when I watch Girls. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So maybe prescribe Gilmore Girls and a Sex and the City. Yes. There's this guy who is really cute and I'm interested to get to know him. But he's 24 and I'm 19. He has a job while I go to class. Too much of an age difference. I'm not going to say anything on that. But <laughs> um, when it comes to you being in class and stuff like that, I feel like when it comes to like being in a relationship with somebody who's older, like their life might look so different mm-hmm. than what yours right. does and the things that you guys are focused on and the things you want out of a relationship, the things you want out of life. Um, so I feel like if maybe both of your like visions or what you want align, I think it's fine. Um, but I feel like things can get messy. So I would prescribe to listen to the song, Dear John, by Taylor Swift mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and then prescribe what it could have should have. Um, oh, so maybe you don't recommend that she does this. I would say just listen to it because that c- is how it could end up. But right. we all need to go through that canon event. By the way, when people say canon event on social media, what does that mean? Yeah, what does that mean? Yes. It's a reference. You raise your hand, you're in class with your egg salad. <laughs> <laughs> It's a it's a reference to that Spider Man movie. It's a big plot point. I've but what does that have to do with the canon? Like canon is when like an event is true in a narrative. Never knew that. Is that right? why canon photography? Fo- photography. <laughs> no. <laughs> like that's how old the word photography is. I just like literally can say it. Uh, oh wow. Okay. Cute. Um, <laughs> canon. Love it. Alan. Nick Cannon. <laughs> Shout out. Shout out. My- Maybe he's my daddy in November. Maybe. Oh, yeah. That'd Maybe. Be good. That would be good for press. Okay, we have two more Tell Me What's Wrongs, and then I'm going to play a fun game with you okay. where I ask you, I know people like to ask you, like, what would you do for this brand? But, like, obviously, you know I'm obsessed with pop stars. Like, I'm going to ask you, like, what PR moves would you do for okay. X pop star? Okay. Okay. My friend and I had a threesome with our friend's brother. That's hot. I, yeah, Okay. I prescribed Best Friend's Brother by Victorious, like, right? I oh, think. yeah. That's it. That was the whole sentence? Yeah. Oh, that was just a flex. Yeah, <laughs> okay, I- that was a question. Okay, I see you, girl. Yeah. Get hit. I broke up with my narcissistic boyfriend, and I knew it was the right thing to do, and all of my friends couldn't be happier, but I'm miserable. I hate this and can't help but feel like I made a mistake. Okay, what I would prescribe is I feel like this is this is this is hard because a lot of the times when your friends tell you to break up with like your asshole boyfriend, you're like, okay, cool, like, and then you do it, and then you see them like hooking up with girls, and you're like, so like, am I just supposed to sit here and fucking twiddle my thumbs? Like, yeah, this like, fucking sucks. I'm pissed the fuck yeah. off. Um, I would prescribe you to break up with him. Mm-hmm. And then catfish him, right? So you can still text him yeah. as somebody else. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then still do you. So I would prescribe to watch Catfish, Mm -hmm. especially the episode with the guy who thinks he's dating Katy Perry. (laughs) What? You've never seen it? It's my favorite piece of media. I talk about it all the time. Wait, what? They go to England. They find out, obviously, it's not Katy Perry. And then (laughs) when when the show wrapped, he emails the girl again being like, hey, oh, my God, I can't believe you set that up with MTV. Like, you're such a jokester. Like, (laughs) he still thinks it's Katy. What? Yeah, you guys need to watch it. So I prescribe Catfish. And you can catfish him so you can still talk to him and feel close to him. But then you can still do your own thing. Damn, enough said. Yeah. Well, that's it for the Tell Me What's Wrongs. Wow, Robin, you crushed those prescriptions. Thank you so much. Like, really and truly. Thank you. I feel like I've gone to therapy since I was eight, so. Oh, me too. My therapist, the first therapy I went to was for anger management. Oh, same. And I was eight, and they put me in anger management, and they made me do this chart of, like, how do you feel when you're this level? How do you feel when you're, like, Uh so angry? And my dad came to pick me up one day because my mom couldn't, and he came in and saw what I was doing and writing, and he pulled me out, and he was like, get this get this fucking eight-year-old out of anger management. Like, when we went to Wendy's, and I was like, yes. Yeah. Um, and then, like, when my mom made me go back, I was like, I don't need anger management! <laughs> yeah, like, throwing myself on the ground. Because I would go like this uh-huh. and make myself pass out. What? Yeah, when I, like, didn't get what, like, when I was, like, one. I would, yeah. I would, um, I would. I, I learned would... that on the bus. Really? <laughs> yeah, I learned that on the bus. I really did. Wait, you you do that, you pass out. I would hold my breath, so I would, like, cover my, I, this is dangerous, don't do this. I would, like, <laughs> my nose and do this to make myself pass out. And did you, did it work? Yeah. Okay, let's get into really what you are so incredible at, which is, if you guys don't know, which obviously you do know, Robin is known for her PR predictions on Mm -hmm. TikTok. She really cultivated that whole, you basically created that and like created that yeah, like I mean, I, I kind of use it. I, I liked, I started the series because I kind of wanted to use it as like a receipt. So like if these things happen, I could go back right. to them. And then when I was giving brands ideas, I could also use it as a, a way to like be like, oh, um, 
if these things come true, like I was on the nose for trend forecasting, like it was kind of just like my receipts, is right. my TikTok, and then it turned into other people wanting to um, get involved with it or tell me who to do next, and it was like a cool call to action, kind of like with what you did, and yeah. it helped me grow my audience a lot. Well, that's yeah, that's the. Well, that's yeah, that is that's <laughs> so cute. Well, that's yeah. <laughs> well, that's yeah. That's how I feel. Twenty. No, but I think engaging with your audience is something that really is like the key to yeah. Working it's exactly on social media. what you do all the time. But I wanted to play what are what should this pop princess do next? Okay. Okay, so let's start with Olivia Rodrigo. Okay, so I've thought about this for a little bit and her albums are so good. Like she is just on top of the world. Right. Like I, I think when it comes to music and the type of albums she makes, like I don't think she needs any help with that. But I think that she should do an A twenty four film. I think she wow. should do acting a little bit more yeah. because she started acting as a child actress and then she did high school musical, the musical, the series. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Say that for my class. Um so I think it'd be a cool way because right now I feel like we all See, she was so personal with her fans right. in the beginning when she was coming up, and then she became so big so fast. So it's hard to get as like personal right. and as to show as much of yourself. And now I feel like she's in the pop, the place where like we love her, respect her, we love her music, but we kind of want a little bit more of her and right. like show a little bit more of her personality and who she is. And I feel like doing yeah. like an independent movie with like an A twenty four where there would be like a press tour. He's nodding. A press, yeah. <laughs> a press tour behind the scenes and just seeing her acting dialogue, spoken. a yeah. lot of di- like dialogue talking. and maybe a role that. Like, people wouldn't expect her to do. You heard it here first. Olivia Rodrigo, A24 yeah. movie. Tell me, girlie. Okay. Sabrina Carpenter. Okay. Mm. So she should be a lot bigger than she is. Yeah. But she's this year, last year, she gained a huge, so much recognition. I mean, she, the Eras tour, like, I feel like people are finally coming into, like, becoming a Sabrina Carpenter fan. Right. Especially with her like nonsense outro that went viral. Mm-hmm. She's dating that guy from Saltburn. How yes, how crazy. Yeah. I, I mean at least that's what I see on the internet. Because I feel like she busted her ass last year touring, doing all this stuff, raising awareness. Now people like care about her, know who she is, like her music. So if she has a public relationship, then the music that's gonna come out of that yes. will be really important, yes. especially when it's somebody who's also in the spotlight. Like very exactly. Yeah. So I think she's doing what she's doing right now is good and maybe making that relationship a little more public, public. and like yeah. having a moment with that but yeah. it's not I don't think it's a PR relationship but I think playing into that and then dropping an album whether it's about falling in love or breaking up will be right good. yeah aligned but I think I don't think she I, th- I think she should stay in the music lane and keep her head down because like she's getting there like okay. she's getting where she needs to be I feel like in two years maybe next year I feel like maybe next year she'll be nominated for like best new artist like I feel like she's on that trajectory has she not can you not get what what is the how do you I don't understand, like, because some people get nominated for Best New Artist so many years into their career. Like, what is the... I think you can get nominated whenever, but you just can't be a nominee from anything before. Um, But, like, the TikTok I made, like, literally Amy Winehouse and Taylor Swift were nominated the same year. And Amy won. We also didn't talk about our love for Amy. Like, there will never be another Amy. No. Did you watch the trailer? Not yet. I need to. Okay. Is it good? I'll just let you watch it. Okay. So, no. Oh, okay, yeah. so no. Yeah. Um, well, nothing will ever be as good as that documentary. Nothing. That's the best documentary I've ever seen in my entire We're life. We're talking about the Amy documentary. You guys have to watch it. What about the scene when she's on vacation with her dad? <gasps> and the guy comes up and goes, hey, I, I, I hate doing this, and I'm, I'm not this kind of person, but can I get a picture? And she goes, if you really hated doing it and you weren't that kind of person, then, like, why are you asking? She's so honest. Like, because that's the truth. You know what I mean? It's like, why are you saying this? And the dad was like, take the picture. My favorite part about that documentary. The opening when she's singing happy birthday. That and the fact that what the documentary does is they interview a lot of people, but they don't show any of their faces. The only face, they only, throughout the entire thing, they only show videos of Amy Winehouse Mm -hmm. and like videos from her life. And that's my favorite part of it. Because it's like so immersive. And it like tells a story. Like at the end, like you want her to win, even though you know what happens. You're rooting for her to win the whole time. Which is like like, why heart breaks your heart. Yeah. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. It's Every like, time. It's like her and Brittany Murphy. It's like, it's like heartbreaking. Well, the, I just watched that Brittany Murphy doc, and that is crazy. Yeah. We'll discuss after. But, um, okay. Well, speaking of Taylor Swift, because of the Eras tour, she, and she has a new album coming out, what are your PR predictions for Taylor Swift? So whenever I talk about Taylor Swift, um, I'm a huge fan. I literally went to Gillette, like, every yeah. era, like, love it so much. But sometimes when I talk about, like, moves that I have for her, um, 
people online are like, oh, my God, no, 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 no. Like, you're not a fan. Like, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to tread carefully with this. But I think Taylor Swift with the dead. No, the dead. What is it called? <laughs> the, the Tortured Poets The Tortured Society. Poets it's, Department. You know how it's like, whatever. <laughs> um, it's coming out in April. Yeah, April 19th. So my PR prediction was that she was going to get engaged in April, but not tell anybody until December. Um, but I think for that album, how she should roll it out, I think she should bring back what she used to do when she would roll out albums and invite a group of people to one of her houses yep. and do the listening for it, especially with this album that's very personal and like more so poetry and right. kind of have it be like a poetry reading rather yeah. than that. But she didn't, she hasn't done that in a minute. She hasn't done that since Reputation. Yeah. So well, did she do it for Lover? No. No. She might have. Do you remember if she did it for Lover? No. Okay. No, she didn't. And um, so I think kind of having that, those intimate moments with fans again, I think would be really special, especially because right now she's bigger than anything in the world. And like, she can't even walk, like when she walks in, like it's, she's larger than life. She's larger than life. So then to bring her back down to earth with the people who brought her there. I think would be like really yeah, important. Yeah, she really special. does like love the Swifties. Yeah, you can tell. Yeah, it's always nice to see. And but and I loved the like Disney documentary where she went through every song. Like I love those intimate moments. What Disney? Oh, the long pond. Sessions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, How sick would when she finishes her re-recordings a Disney doc with each yeah. like a six six part series? I'm sure it's in the works. It must be. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, for the final one because she also has a new album coming out. Dua Lipa. Okay. Dula Peep. I, so you know how she did the Versace collab? Yeah. I think that she should more so, more so is that a word? I think she should really lean into the the fashion edge. Because yeah. back in the day, pop stars, they used to be like Y2K fashion right. girlies. Right. Like I, I think I want her to take on that role more. Like of being like a carpet queen of like yes. working with these designers, being their muses, like right. doing runway, doing fashion, like really leaning into that. And what she did with the Versace was like incredible and so successful. So I feel like she should differ. How do you say that word? Different. Differentiate. How do you say that? Differentiate. differentiate. I think she's differentiate. <laughs> I can't say it. <laughs> she should change it up. <laughs> she should change it up. She should set herself apart from the competition <laughs> by really leaning into like being a fashion girly. Yeah. She's gorge. Well, thank you, Robin. I love mm-hmm. you so much. And thank you. But oh wait, what did we learn today? Oh my god, we learned so much. Right. I, I have think, my takeaways. I think we learned that egg salad is fucking disgusting. Disgusting. I think we learned that going on the bus as a kid to school shapes you into the person that you are today. And yeah, those are my, those are my, I feel like those are my two main takeaways. My takeaway is that I need a mom guest. Yes. That's my takeaway. Yes. Oh, and. uh, Oh, your your session's up. I'm so sorry, everyone. Robin, thank you so much. I love you so much. Pussies, I love you so much. Remember to submit Tell Me What's Wrongs at PassThatPuss.com, and I will see you next week in the therapist's office. Bye. Hi, pussies. Put your tents up. Put your tents up. Tents up. Smart cookies.